In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson explains how you feel when you procrastinate and what happens when society is corrupt. All right, so Jonah, he gets a call from God, and God tells him that there's a city, Nineveh, that's falling into moral disarray. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's a universal story. It's like all cultures are always falling into disarray. It's their nature. Just entropy does that, right? Things change. The, the world changes. The environment changes. And the culture doesn't keep up very well. And then, of course, it has corrupt elements. And so it's an inter eternal story. The individual is always placed in relationship to a culture that's somewhat corrupt. And then the question is, well, what do you do about it? And if the answer is nothing, well then it'll just get more corrupt. And if the answer is, be corrupt too, then it will just get more corrupt. So the answer has to be, to oppose the corruption. Because that's the only way it's going to stop. Now, God threatens to destroy this city because of its corruption. And I don't think you need to presume anything particularly metaphysical about that to understand it. It's very straightforward that the more corrupt the culture is and the less trust is possible between individuals, the less productive the culture is going to be. Because why do anything if some corrupt person is just going to come and take it? You know, it, it might even be that the culture is so corrupt that if you are good for something and you produce resources, you're actually more likely to get killed because you have something of value. So, like, there's just, you're just not going anywhere with that. And why would you work if you didn't have any sense that, you know, you could store up the value of your work for some reasonable time in the future? So, if the society is corrupt and there's no trust, it's degenerating. And, you know, it might live for a while, but is isn't going to last very long, and so that's the idea. Corrupt societies collapse. That leaves open what corruption means. Anyways, Jonah thinks, no, <laughs> no bloody way. I'm not going to that city. They can go to hell as far as I'm concerned, and that's really what he thinks. And why in the world should I do anything about it anyways? And these are good objections. It's like, why would you do that? And you'll face this, believe me, in your life. You will face this, in fact, you already do, always. Constantly, continually, in small ways perhaps, when you're interacting with people who aren't treating you properly. And when you're acting, and those might be your parents, they might be your friends, they might be people at your workplace, they might be professors. They're playing a crooked game, and you don't like it. And you know it's crooked. And so then the question is, well, what should you do about it? Well, if you know, you're crook know it's crooked, it's not so good to play along with it. I mean, we'll say that you know it's crooked by your own standard of values. It, de it degrades you to play along with it. You're going to stand up and oppose it? Well, no. <laughs> probably not. You're probably going to do what Jonah did, jump on a ship and get the hell out of there. And, you know, that's a logical thing to do, but it doesn't solve the problem. And I think this has something to do with human ethical responsibility, because there are other old stories and I'll tell you one likely, where the son of the king, the lion king, the son of the king, he goes off and he's some pathetic adolescent, and then he's shamed by the reappearance of his old girlfriend into turning into something vaguely useful, and he opens his eyes and he goes back and he fights Scar, and you know it's a scene of hell, right, because there's fire everywhere, and he fights Scar, finds out Scar killed his father, he casts him into the pit, roughly speaking, and then the rain comes. And then, you know, the movie returns to its beginning, fundamentally. It's in paradise, paradise lost, paradise regained. That's the movie. And, and, I mean, that's the story of human beings, you know. You're in a place that's working out pretty well. Something happens to knock you off your perch. You're down in the chaos for a good amount of time, and maybe you never get out. But maybe you learn something down there. Maybe you strengthen your character. And then you pop up to a new place, and maybe it's better. Better aim, better you. Now, I'm not being overly optimistic about this. I know perfectly well that people 
encounter impediments during their life that they find almost impossible to recover from but it's the best shot you have so anyways Jonah runs away but God isn't very happy about that because it's actually Jonah's destiny it's necessary for Jonah to repair the city so God sends a storm and you know the waves are high and and, and I think what that means is because the water is often a symbol for the unconscious and that's because things lurk down there in the water and that you can pull up that, that are useful monstrous things that you can pull up that are useful you can fish for them you can go fishing in your own being for answers which is what you do when you try to think right? you ask yourself a question and you wait and maybe an answer appears it's like, where did that come from? you didn't know what the answer was before it appeared what it just pop into being out of nowhere? who knows? so you fish so anyways, the waves come and the, the boat's going to be knocked over and, and that's what happens, I think, when you know when you know you should do something I mean, everyone has the, this experience, I believe perhaps you would be willing to put up your hands if this experience is foreign to you okay? there's part of you telling you you should do something and it's hard to do it effortful, and maybe you're afraid of it and so you don't do it, you just procrastinate right? and so how do you feel about that? good? I mean, so what, you feel that you're betraying yourself your anxiety actually gets worse, not better, even though, you know, you can put it off moment to moment but that doesn't help, because every time you put it off, the anxiety just grows a little bit you're not proud of yourself, you have a sense that you're making things more chaotic than they should be you know, and if you do that long enough, and I'm sure many of you have had that experience if you do that long enough, if that becomes habitual things will get so stormy around you that you'll fall right into the into the chaos, into the watery chaos and maybe you'll drown so it's not a very good idea to run from your destiny, let's say whatever that might be and you need a destiny, you need a place to aim at, because that's what gives your life meaning and you need meaning in your life, because life is hard so, you know, you need something to buttress yourself against